Well, it is finally here, the last day of the year 2013. And as you can see, I am not alone tonight. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us for this uh, last KTN Prime Bulletin. Good evening, James. Good evening, Joy. Um, Good evening, Wilson. The year 2013, what a year it has been. Yeah. Absolutely, indeed, Wilson. And we join you tonight uh, to wish our viewers a happy new year, even as they review the year 2013. And well, it's already 2014 in some parts of the world, and the new year was ushered in with dazzling fireworks in Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, and Japan. Well, indeed, fireworks in Australia there. Back home, we are all counting hours to our own fireworks display. And on KTN, this countdown will come to you live from Eldoret. Now, reporter Masi Kandi is standing by to bring you all that action from Eldoret. And as we wait for uh, as we wait for uh, Masi Kandia to get ready to give us a bit of a preview on what's going on in Eldoret, we have a lot of uh, stuff prepared for you tonight, and here are the highlights of what's coming up. Girls outwit boys as KCP examination results are officially released. Reality check. January is here. Just how prepared are parents for the new school term? I've got to disclose a scandal of the year. This is a scandal of the year. A scandal in the making, Koto raises a red flag of a misuse of pensioners' funds. And South Sudan rebel leader Riyak Bachar agrees to enter into peace talks. and top candidates of the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education examinations and ye end the end of the year with pomp and color following the announcement of the KCP results by the Cabinet Secretary for Education. Let's take a closer look at how the day turned out for the top candidates nationally. Now we are going to have that story later on in the bulletin but many schools in the regions posted outstanding performances in the KCP exams securing positions among the top ranked schools yet while the top performers celebrated in Bungoma a school that had registered 21 candidates was torn between celebrating and the performance of the top ranked student in Bungoma and counting their losses as 19 students had their results cancelled New Year's Eve brought good news to a section of schools at the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education examination results of 2013 were released. This year, public schools in the regions would steal the limelight away from schools in the capital city. Little known Kadikiri B Primary School was a top-ranked public school in the country. Masons who are renovating the little school Kadigiri B also produced the number three student in the country, Riziki Mpeketu. In the private schools category, Makini Ngongrod emerged tops once again, holding on to its position at the top. They have worked very, they worked very hard. The, the parents also were very supportive. The children were very receptive, disciplined, focused, and they worked hard and all the stuff. Nyali sent Kevin Elite from Mombasa County would clinch the number two position in the private schools category. Once again, Nairobi's New Light Academy joined the list of fame, coming third. <laughs> News of Bomet County's Chelsea Academy's fourth position sparked a round of celebrations as the school climbed one level up after being number five in 2012 KCPE. Chelsea has also produced Bomet County's top student, Elvis Ayora Oribi, who is number 67 nationally. Grateful to the teachers, to the parents, to the children. 
and uh, I think the results came out because of togetherness, commitment and discipline of the children. Yet while others celebrated in Bungoma, 19 students counted their losses. Nabongo Junior Academy ought to have been celebrating after it produced the top student in Bungoma, one Mike Wangunda, who scored 432 marks. He was, however, one of only two students from the school who received their results. The rest received a surprise when they sent their index numbers to the short codes provided by the Kenya National Examination Council. They received the usual short messages with their scores, but they would find that each had been allocated a zero in Kiswahili. In addition, all 19 students had been awarded marks in sign language, a subject they claim was not offered by the school. If I look at the first position, who is uh, Mike Buta Wangunda, has 98 in Kiswahili and Ahead of it, they have written there KSL and some other equal signs, what, uh, which I don't know what they mean. It is very surprising when we try to ask for the results of the others, they bring the results without Kiswahili. They write there Kiswahili 00, zero. and then KSL, of which when I ask people, they say KSL means Kenya Sign Language. Bungoma County Director of Education Daniel Mosi Bay advised those with complaints to forward them to his office for action. In 2013, new schools springing up to jostle for the title of KCPE giant. Wilkinson Abu Katie. Now take a look at a graphical breakdown of the performance countrywide. celebrations of the KCP results die down, parents will have to quickly come down to the reality of the burden on their pockets beginning tomorrow, January of 2014. The damage caused by spending on festivities in December will roll over to, com to complicate the demands of their first month of 2014. And as KTN's Najma Ismail reports, there is more to for, for parents to worry about in 2014 than there was in 2013. Meet Melissa Otieno, a mother of seven who lives in Nairobi's Kibera informal settlement. Just like most Kenyan parents, she's preparing her children to go back to school next week. However, her children will not get new uniforms or books. 
There's simply no budget for such items this time. But niliona kama sitanunua. Kwa sababu hakuna pesa. As the children stare at their tattered uniforms, there's little their mother can do. She says the cost of living has spiraled not just beyond her reach, but also beyond the reach of most of her neighbors. She can struggle enough to feed her children and to pay their fees. The rest is just luxury. Kati wa Christmas elishindwa kwa paia vitu. So mini lipanga, wataenda tuna uniform amba walenda na yu last year. Alafu saipia nimesa tembea kwa marafiki zangu. Wengine wamesha nipatia ma textbooks. Zenye watoto wa waliwaja. After making merry during the December holidays, the reality of January dawns on many parents. They now have to buy school uniforms, pay fees, and maybe, just maybe, buy a set top box. The list is endless. A sport check across Nairobi shows some of the early birds who wanted to do their shopping ahead of the expected weekend rush. However, most of them are also complaining. for example, like kitabu kama social studies class 5 or class 4 it's almost 680 and ile book mtoto atatumia tu mwaka mmoja ushamadizana naye with increase of vat on many commodities the rise in fuel prices the cost of living has become unbearable for many kenyans but the year 2014 comes with just a few more demands to add to the nightmare Kenyans now have to find some cash to buy the set of boxes that will help them jump into the digital television era. Play things, they are like a luxury in the house. Yeah. If you want to listen to news, go back to radio. Listen to news on the radio. So, kama waki amua hatina kwa ya digital, tutaka tu hivi venye tuko. Lakina tuwezi kununua hizo wa hiyo ya nye wanasema. Hmm. Atutaweza. Najma Ismail, KTN Prime. Now we are getting a uh, read, or rather we are getting to the end of the year 2013. And um, let me just give you a small fact about 2013. It is the first year with a, uh, with a different, with a, with different figures rather. That is 2013. And this is, it is the first time it is happening since 1987. And, um, let me tell you that it has been an interesting year. There have been a lot of moments that we can remember 2013 year. And um, to take us through those moments is uh, joy and uh, smart. Yeah, That's take right. you up on, on, on your moments. The 2013, 2014 yes. also be another, you know, 2014. Uh, absolutely. Like. And I, I think it's uh, probably because of the 198201. I know. Probably, yeah. But which would you say have been the biggest moments for you in 2013? Westgate is um, right up there with them. Mm -hmm. um, Kenya at 50 has to be right there, right up there with them. And um, probably Mandela. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, this is just some of the stories Smart that we're going to, to be looking at, I Arsenal guess. Um, there, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different... Arsenal. <laughs> well, 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 I, I don't want to get there because clearly I'm not on that side. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll get into that. But we're here tonight and what we want to do is walk down those memory days and you know the things that have been big this year the uh, election like you mentioned has been big uh, they have to be uh, Westgate has to be there Mandela has to be there all this we want to walk in there but most importantly we want to get your views also on what has been big for you and shortly we'll be sharing with you on the screen the number that you can WhatsApp us your videos and pictures and tell us just how your year has been you know what has been the biggest year for you was it your birthday what are you up to this evening would like to share that moment with us but first let's begin with what has been possibly arguably the biggest story this year that has to be the general election 2013 pitting raila odinga against uhuru kenyatta that is called versus jubilee let's walk down that lane and we'll come back and discuss some more now I have to give the certificate of results of these presidential elections to the candidate who has won the election. By law, I'm required to give it to him and to give a copy 
to the current president and another copy to the Chief Justice of the, of the Republic of Kenya. I have got three copies. One is for the candidate elect. It says the Independent Electoral Marriage Commission, form number 37, under the Elections Act, Rule, 80, uh, rule 87, 1A, the Certificate of Results of Presidential Elections 2013. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IBC, certifies that the candidate who has been duly elected the President of the Republic of Kenya under the provisions of Article 138 of the Constitution in the presidential elections held on 4th March 2013 is Uhuru Kenyatta. The fourth President of the Republic of Kenya, the Honorable Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. Asante. Asante sana, asante ni sana. Asante ni sana, asante ni sana. Mimi siku ya leo yangu si mengi. Ya kwanza kumshukuru Mungu na kusema ya kwamba sisi tukiwa viongozi wa jubilii wa Kenya wa jumla tumeamua ya kwamba uamuzi ambaye umetolewa na wananchi wa Kenya sisi zote twajitolea kuhakikisha ya kwamba huu ushindi sio ushindi wetu sisi lakini ni ushindi wa Mwenyezi Mungu ya pili nichukue nafasi hii kuwashukuru wa Kenya pahali popote ambapo walipo kwa vile walijitokeza kwa wingi kupiga kura mukavumilia jua mukavumilia njaa mukasema ya kwamba lazima haki yenu muipate tunawashukuru wa Kenya wote pahali ambapo walipo kwa sababu walijitokeza kwa njia ambaye ilitisha wengi ya tatu nichukue nafasi hii pia kuwashukuru wananchi wa Jamhuri ya Kenya kwa sababu wakati kwa sababu wakati inchi nyingi zilikuwa na hofu ya kwamba wa Kenya hawawezi kuchaguana kwa amani mumeonesha dunia mzima ya kwamba sisi ni taifa la amani tunawashukuru wa Kenya wote na hiyo ndiyo barabara ambayo tutaweza kujenga taifa letu la Kenya pamoja kwa amani na tuhakikishe ya kwamba kila mkenya ameweza kupata haki yake another tainted election this is not the ibc that kenyans and judge krigra envisioned this crisis is not just about the ibc it's a crisis in the very workings of the faith that kenyans have placed in their institutions to respect their democratic rights and the rule of law it is democracy that is on trial. As we said repeatedly during the campaign, you would have readily conceded if the IBC had attempted to deliver a reasonable, honest elections. Or even if it had, been, uh, had addressed the serious concerns that the court team led by the vice president formally presented to the commission three days ago. We only want to lead if Kenyans want us to. We have no other vested interests. And if Kenyans don't want us, we don't want to impose ourselves on the will of the people of Kenya.
absolutely that's why i would like to pick up this conversation the most memorable and it was pitted as the mother of all elections if you like coming on the heels of 2007 elections joy that's right and you know now that kenya did usher in you know the new constitution i think this 2013 election was very remarkable in a sense that we saw people voting six ballot boxes you know and they voted for the president they voted for their senators they voted for the governors you know they voted for the for their members of parliament so i mean this 2013's election was remarkable in kenya's history absolutely the mm -hmm. fact that it was actually under the new constitution and it was a peaceful election uh, we, uh, after the debacle of uh, 2007 i think it was a welcome gesture that you know kenya can actually hold credible elections regardless of uh, the fact that we had so many people to vote for. Uh, indeed, and it came with its twists and turns, if you like. We, it was a peaceful election. I mean, Kenyans did their bit, mm -hmm. you know, voting the six piece, if you like, mm -hmm. after the elections. We knew it was going to be always tight and it was very close, very tense, up to the last minute, exactly. if you like, Absolutely. until it was announced, very much in 51, uh, just crossing over 51, uh, Plus one, over, that is over 50 plus one, yeah. I, th I think for the, the first time, well, at least for the time that I've been in Kenya, I saw a lot of voter turnout. You know, unlike the previous elections, I think this was different. People were so enthusiastic about uh, who they're going to vote for. They were so excited about the fact that we have uh, devolution in Kenya and now it's going to be practically implemented. I, th I think that, that was quite And, and from a journalistic um, point of view, I think it was the most exciting uh, campaigns you know to to cover it was fascinating it was fascinating to cover i mean this beautiful studio uh we christened it the atrium <laughs> and we were covering it joy dorin Bira was here you know uh taking all uh, options and communications from Until. world over oh, you yeah. know uh, i was up there interviewing people all through the night it was just a beautiful piece to cover it was one of those moments you'd want to be uh, c to be in you know in journalism and cover these elections it was fascinating it was historic the first elections under the new constitution beautiful piece if you like that's right and also we should commend uh, the, the those who did participate in in you know the politics this year uh, first of all to start with the presidential candidates for accepting the results yeah, you know absolutely. if we look back at 2007 2008 uh, especially with the 2008 post-election violence you know the world was looking at Kenya we, we saw international media stage managed stories that didn't exactly portray Kenya you know in 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 positive light but Kenyans showed that we were better than what we were in 2008 and uh, you know what was portrayed in 2013 was, you know, was I, I very, like how very uh, uh, Joy says in Kenya we we Kenyans yes. we yeah. come on come on all right um we, we can definitely agree that you know the 2013 general election uh, stamped Kenya as a democratic powerhouse. Let's move on. We did promise you the uh, top story of tonight, top candidates of the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education examinations and the year with pomp and color following the announcement of the KCP results by the Cabinet Secretary for Education. Let's take a closer look at how the day turned out for the candidates nationally. <laughs> When the Cabinet Secretary for Education, Jacob Kaimeni, called out his name first, Brian Kimutai of Stewart's Light School in Nandi County was in Kisumu visiting his aunt. <laughs> Brian Kimutai and his younger sister are children of a broken home. They and their mother have been living in Kapkengani in Nandi with their grandfather. News of his success brought his parents together for the first time in years. On the last day of the year, the Kimutai family will cross over to the new year together. Clearly for them, the KCP results came with more blessings than they had anticipated. <laughs> I'm very happy and I'm, I'm very proud of my son. To him I say thank you. At Golden Elite Junior School in Kisumu County, Akoth Otieno, who tied with Brian Kimutai with 444 points, was overjoyed. <laughs> The number three slot was captured by this boy from Akweni County. Exam wasn't hard, but 
I worked hard and it was with support from my guardians and teachers that I made it. And say we are very proud of him for the work that he has done. Uh, coming through all the mountains and the hills was not easy, but I think he has done the best job. He tied with three other candidates. One of those three candidates is Jonathan Kosgay, who, as we found out, is the last born of four boys and was determined to outdo his siblings. The first born, I at 410. Second born, I 400. The third born, I 430. And after that, we were 442. Joyce has been raising her sons on her own since her husband died in 2005. Mchani wa KCP huwa na mamu mengi utokea na unaweza kujipata katika nambari yoyote. So, kwa hivyo, nilifurai na kumshukuru mungu. This year, 844, 475 candidates sat for the KCP examination. It is, first of all, God and the, the support of my parents, my teachers. Catherine Omwando, KTN. Well, congratulations are in order for all those students who performed exceptionally well. Let's move on. The Inspector General of Police, David Kemayo, has warned that the use of alcohol in, uh, to nab drunk drivers in the ban on night travel for public service vehicles will continue beyond the festive season until sanity returns on Kenyan roads. He also wa he's also warning uh, clerics intent on radicalizing the youth that they will be dealt with. Some of the youths are being cheated that if you accept to join this particular denomination and then you accept to be trained under that particular name of being radicalized in a certain way that uh, this is a good denomination, then our youths are easily accepted even to go to the neighboring country and be trained. And you can see a number of those youths are coming from the western Kenya, coming from the Nyanza province, some of them come from uh, Rift Valley, some from Central and some from Nairobi here, and majority of them also come from the coast province. Kotu Secretary General Francis Atwali is asking President Uhuru Kenyatta to cancel a 5 billion shillings tender awarded to China's Jiangxi International Kenya for infrastructure development of Tasia in Eastland. Atwali says the development, besides being fraudulent, could be the biggest wastage of pensioners' funds by the NSSF. KTN's Joy Doreen Bira has more. Between 1994 and 1995, the National Social Security Fund acquired land in Tasia to a tune of 2.2 billion shillings. But by 2011, 5,500 squatters were on this land. And to formalize the plot owners, they were asked to pay 650,000 each, and that would come to a tune of 2.5 billion shillings. But between 2001 and 2011, just 1.1 billion shillings has been cleared. The Kotu Secretary General Francis Atwoli, who also sits on the NSSF Board of Directors on Investments, has asked President Uhuru Kenyatta to revoke a decision made by the NSSF trustees to award a 5 billion shillings contract for the development of Tasia. Atwoli also wants the current NSSF top officials shown the door over the alleged irregular allocation of funds. The money workers will, and employers will be contributing will not be in the safe hands if such people like the current chairman of NSSF, uh, Mr. Dan Mohammed, and the young man, um, I pity the young man who is the acting managing trustee, Richard Langert, to have involved himself in such like, it is too early for him. Atwoli argues the NSSF board previously approved 3.3 billion shillings for the development, which required plot owners to pay 650,000 shillings each as contribution towards the cost of infrastructure. Yet the squatters on the land failed to clear the initial 2.5 billion agreed upon when the fan first acquired the land in 1995. By raising the development cost to 5 billion, Atwoli says this will increase the amount demanded from each squatter to 920. 
20,000 shillings. 5.053 billion is not 5.053 cents. That is a huge amount of money that uh, an estate cannot consume. The National Social Security Fund has in the past had infrastructure projects that Koto says have been a waste of pensioners' money and should be investigated. Hazina Trade Center, Embakasi Utility Plots, and Nyayo Embakasi Phase 6 are some of the projects the workers' body is pointing at. Effort to get comments from Atwali's colleagues on the NSSF board or management were unsuccessful. This, is, this was a scam and a scandal of the year. This means the squatters stand a chance of being kicked off the land and the plots sold out to new owners. Joy Doreen Bira, KTN. Now we're looking at moments that made headlines in the year 2013. And um, let me just give you another fact of 2013. In 2013, it was discovered that the numerics in the Arabic language are actually not Arabic. They were developed in India. James Smart. Well, son, who cares about that? It's a good factor. Well, we're just hours away, hours away to 2014. But Australia, Hong Kong, New Zealand and Japan are already in 2014. Would you believe that? Don't believe me. Take a look at this. Absolutely breathtaking. Anyway, we'll take a short break now. Gotta get a glass of water. But don't you go away. We'll be back with more after that. Carbing Road Carnage. A Nyeri man invents a tamper-proof speed governor. I feel good. I have no words to express. I'm very happy. And I'm, I'm very proud of my son. You're watching KTN Prime.
Welcome back. You're watching KTN Prime. It is the very last bulletin of this year. And um, after watching the incredible fireworks in Australia and Hong Kong and other places that have already crossed over to the other year, uh, we move over to Eldoret where Masi Kandie is on standby. Good evening, Masi. Please um, tell us what's going on in Eldoret. Yes, indeed. Good evening to you back in Nairobi. We are here live on Kenya's television network, KTN, at the City of Champions. We are having a peace concert, peace concert held at the Eldoret Sports Club. We have had various presentations by renowned gospel musicians from all over the country, yet more others are yet to perform. If you're within Eldoret, you will be able to have access to the Eldoret Sports Ground at only a, uh, 300 Kenya shillings. But now we are joined live by the champions themselves, renowned athletes uh, Kipchoge Keino and Moses Tanui. Karibuni sana to the Peace Concert. Yes, the crowd is cheering our true champions. We are proud to be associated with you. Thank you. How, where, what have you been up to? People want to know, Mr. Kipchoge Keino, what have you been up to? Uh, what, what we want, we want to wish you a happy new year and welcome to this city of the champion. This city, we need a lot of things. We need to improve, we need a teamwork, we need peace. We need to improve the standard of sport in this city. We also need facilities, infrastructure. We need more hotel. We need our athletes to do the best and they have done the best for this world. We need more people to work together and standard of training in this area is the best. We want people from all over the world to come here. I'm asking the people of this city, let us have a five-star hotel. Let us have the best running stadium like Hip Kano Stadium to be finished and finalized for us to be able to use that stadium. We thank you and we wish you all the best for this new year, 2014. Kenyans, we want to improve on sports. Sports have done us the best. I wish you all the best and let us work with the youth of this country. Sports has produced, uh, it has made us the best in this world. Thank you. I will not let you go first. I'll still have another question for you, but before I come back to you, Moses Tanui, we are proud to be associated with you. We, your people, it's people like you make the county be known as the city of champions. What have you been up to? Um, first, I want to congratulate Kenyans. And uh, because we are celebrating end year this night, I want to wish you happy new year when we cross the year. What I'm up to is that we tap talents. We have talents in sports and we have talents also in music. So I want to tell everybody that if you have a talent, use it and use it maximum because that is what Kenya needs. Number two, I want to tell our governor, because I know he's around here, that the musician has a problem with pirates. We should stop in this county so that we help the uh, artists to improve their lives like athletes. You know, we get money and they pro when they want to produce um, music, they use a lot of time, a lot of money, and people are using their, um, their efforts to sell these CDs and uh, music of these musicians. So we need to stop, and I'm asking our government, because it's around here, that we should stop pirating. And I want to encourage the musician that you should also be like athletes, because this is an international, um, international music. It's like sport, because it is for peace, and peace, you know, you send peace by singing, you send peace by running, and so many things. Thank you. Uh, Bonamo sister, we end uh, Kipchoge Keino. Speaking of music, I know you will have time to dance later on <laughs> for the people of Kenya, not just run. But uh, we've been asking artists um, since the event started about their New Year's resolution. Are you thinking of going back to running, or what's your New Year's resolution? Well, uh, mine is to put back to the youth of the country. We want the youth of this country to perform well, and that's the most important. And we can do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Moses Tanui. Because I can't run anymore, but I want to put more effort on young athletes so that I can train them and run for this country. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. That was our renowned athletes the, from coming to you live from the City of Champions. Mm -hmm.
Kipchoge Keino and Moses Tanui. I will hand you back now to our studios back in Nairobi. But for the peace concert here in Eldoret, we keep going, we keep dancing, we keep it Kenya's television network. Thank you for keeping it KTN. Well, that's Masi Kandia in Eldoret. And, um, you know, that's a very interesting question posed to um, Kipchoge Keino. Is he going back to athletics? It would be very exciting for some of us who never got to see him. Anyway, let's get on to some more serious issues. Key actors in the, in southern, in the South Sudan conflict have agreed to a ceasefire as efforts for dialogue to bring to an end the two-week fighting in the world's youngest state gets underway. Joseph Bonio has the details. In a statement to newsrooms and attributed to the IGAD special envoy to South Sudan, Lazaro Sumbeyo, the Minister of Foreign Affairs noted that both President Salva Kiir and his former Vice President Riek Machar had agreed to cease fire. Earlier, the BBC had reported that Riek Machar had indicated that he will be sending a delegation to the talks where the ceasefire was expected to be discussed. Rebecca Nyanteng Garang, widow of the late former SPLM chairman John Garang Dimabior, is expected to lead his delegation. But even as the talks got underway in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, heavy fighting was reported in Bo, the contested provincial capital of Jonglei state. According to media reports, government troops fought forces loyal to former Vice President Riek Machar, as well as pro-Machar tribal militia, now known as the White Army. At a meeting in Nairobi last week, regional leaders had wanted a cessation of the fighting before the end of the year. On Monday, Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni told journalists that regional leaders would unite to defeat Riek Machar if he ignored the planned peace talks. We gave Riek Machar some four days to respond. And if he doesn't, we shall have to go for him, all of us. That's what we agreed in Nairobi. South Sudan has been rocked by fighting since December 15th, when fighting among presidential guards spiraled across the country. At least 1,000 people have been reported killed and more than 121,600 are believed to have fled their homes. Joseph Bonyo, KTN Prime. Well, um, we are looking at uh, the moments that made headlines in 2014 and we are asking people to send in their videos and their messages on WhatsApp. Uh, James, there's a number that uh, people can use. Absolutely. 0708 mm -hmm. 1138 Six four three. Once again, zero seven zero eight eleven three six four three. Send in your videos, your pictures, whatever up to you tonight, or what's been your memorable in the year, and send it to us shortly. Joy, Wilson, and myself will play whatever you send us. Promise. And if you're out of the country, all you have to do is just add a plus two five four. Maybe you could be watching us from the diaspora, streaming us live on KTN. That is on standardmedia.co.ke. Just add a plus two five four uh, to that number. That is plus two five four seven zero eight one one three six four three, and we'll be able to receive those moments of yours getting into 2014. Absolutely. So we've been asking from evening where these clips, what you have, and some of you. Most of you have responded and sent us pictures. Uh, we'd like to play some of those pictures and videos that have come through. Let's take a look at how your year has been on 2013. Let's take a look at this. Barbara. Wishing you a joyful, bright, healthy, prosperous, and a happy new year.
wonder what they were sipping in the small thing. <laughs> water, milk, yeah. Other things. <laughs> nah, no other things. Water, milk. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't drink, but I don't know about the two of you. How are you either. taking the uh, also, auto blow also, also situation? What, what? what the auto the... blow, alcohol blow situation? I think, I think every country and every nation and every society must have standards on how they indulge. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just what we're having in terms of when we take it, when we don't, at what point is acceptable. We need it. We are a society, organized society, if you like. Right now, I could be speaking on behalf of Kenyans on Twitter who have been asking, at what point do they get to know that I've gone beyond what is required of me? I've Maybe I've had enough the, bottles the, the that cabinet, I should have the had. The cabinet secretary in, um, in, in charge of road, um, in, in charge of transport, rather, mm-hmm. engineer Michael Kamau said that once you're past one beer, mm-hmm. that's it. And More a beer enough. is what, 6% six, six alcohol content? Probably, I believe so. Yeah. 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 One too many. I think the, the, the whole point is just organized and testing to know when you've not taken enough or when you're able to indulge in other ways. You can have all those beers, people like say, in your house. Well, but then I no think, one stops you from having I think the beers going in your forward, house. we're going to get to a time where, like in South Africa, they have the alcohol blowers in bars where after you've taken a certain amount, you're able to blow and check your levels and then so you can know whether to go on right. or to go home. Let's get there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> moments 2013. Mm-hmm. Westgate was uh, a big moment in, the, in in this year, wasn't it? That's right. And you know, 2013, Kenya has seen darker days maybe in previous years. But on the 21st of September 2013, I think that should be one of the darkest days in Kenya's history where the Westgate Mall was attacked by terrorists. And you know, up until today i think some kenyans are still not comfortable hanging around a mall for more than an hour yeah uh, westgate was in in a sense the biggest security failure this country has ever had mm-hmm. we've seen grenades we've seen people being shot before we've had all these incidents of people being killed in tana river and stuff but westgate was the highest point of insecurity that we've ever had and one of the lowest points we can't argue about that definitely yes it was Let's first of all look at how we covered the Westgate attack in um very dark day in the history of this country we're going to take a short break but don't you don't you go away because we'll have much more after the break Welcome back. You're watching the very last bulletin of this year. And if you've joined us, I am joined by James Smart and um, Joy Dorin Bira. My name is Wilson Buru. We're looking at uh, Moments 2013. And uh, just before we go on to the next moment, uh, in the, the, uh, another moment that made headlines in 2013. Right. Um, about the Westgate uh, saga or the, the Westgate incident, we did forget to mention that um, there was the mattresses issue. Yes. And um, the, the, the soldiers who walked away with uh, a few items. Mm-hmm. So, I 
I think what we got to was. know in 2013 is the fact that, on a lighter note, Kenyans got to realize that mattresses can actually blow up a building. James Matt, uh, what, I, what, what do you have to say about that? I, I think it's a serious issue, uh, and we just let it, it has to be slide and, 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 and calibrate. <laughs> 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 but it's, it, it was a sad turn of events to what was otherwise a very serious uh, event that Kenyans lost their lives, posed serious security questions on our end, and indeed asked tough questions on the Kenyan Defence Forces mm -hmm. for the first time in the history of this country. So, all in all, 2013 was a mixed bag for issues and of security for the security teams and security apparatus uh, and giving us new facts of mattresses and not mattresses. That's for sure. I but think for the, the, the most confusing secretary. thing was um, the fact that, you know, the cabinet secretary did not seem to know what was going on. You know, the fact that you can come out and say uh, clearly that it, it, the mattresses are burning and yet um, when we looked at the footage it looked like something very different. Uh, maybe it's just me. Well, uh, besides, that was the toughest time for Kenyans, and I think the travel advisories did, uh, might not have done us that good, but we are surprised that the turnout of tourists this festive season has been amazing. very amazing. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I think looking past Westgate, it, it brought the best in Kenyans. We are one. Kenyans went out and uh, gave uh, went out to give blood and Kenyans went out and said we are together and I think it showed our best side in that difficult moment if you like. That's for sure but well there are other moments that did uh, you know play out in 2013 and among them we're also going to be looking at the life of Nelson Mandela. Absolutely mm -hmm. great Madiba 95 years of pure greatness they say uh, commentators have said everything that can be said about Nelson Roshilala Mandela. Let's take a look at that memorial service before we come back and just put our notes onto that. Fellow South Africans, our beloved Nelson Holishasla Mandela, the founding president of our democratic nation, has departed. He passed on peacefully in the company of his family around 2050 on the 5th of December 2013. He is now resting. He is now at peace. Our nation has lost its greatest son. Our people have lost a father. Although we knew that this day would come, nothing can diminish our sense of a profound and enduring loss. To the people of South Africa, President 
Nelson Mandela. We joined together in sorrow for a mighty loss and in celebration of a mighty life. What a wondrous display of this rainbow nation. In nature, rainbow emerges from rain and the sun. It is that blending of the symbol of grief and gratitude that I feel today. I hope we'll be able to see the rainbow soon. Through the rain of sadness and the sun of celebration, a rainbow fills our hearts. Oh. Truly a great man, Nelson Mandela, but let it not be forgotten that there was a sign language translator and that there was that selfie moment with Barack Obama. We're going to take a short break now, but don't you go away. We'll be back with more. Welcome back to KTN Sports. Isigerinya Akireo is among the hundreds of athletes who sharpen their skills in the However, the Ugandan athlete came into Kenya in search of greener pastures as a motorcycle mechanic in the but got attracted to the track and field sport and soon after began training. Victor Ogale with the rest of that story. When Segirinya Aki arrived in Kenya from his motherland, Uganda, his sole duty was to become a motorcycle mechanic. It was Ramadan Matovu's idea in 2011, who is a businessman, that greatly played a role in securing Akireo's travel. Matovu had previously supplied motorcycle spares in Busi, Akisumu, Nevash, and Doret before settling in Iten. Shida inye tulipata perikuwa kuna wafundi, hakuna mokenya najua kutengeneza pikipiki. Ndirudi Uganda, anditafuta vijana kama waine. The sight of athletes at first to Isegirinya was foreign and he thought that they were students preparing for school championships. Soon after he realized that he was in the same region with the world's biggest names in track and field, he opted to follow suit. At first, it wasn't easy for Isegirinya, who hails from Masaka district in Uganda, as he had no history of athletics alongside language barriers, as he could only converse in Luganda. Alianza kushikana na marafiki wengine wakimbiaje kutoka Uganda na Sudan. Alianza kukimbia rasa ini mkimbiaje mzuri. His first competitive race was in 2012 at the Standard Chartered Marathon. In the same year, he also took part in the annual M10 Uganda Marathon when he finished 20th. When he reflects where he has reached and the little God has given him, he gives thanks to his grandmother who brought him up and even after he dropped out of secondary school due to lack of school fees, she took him for vocational training as a mechanic. Siwezi wacha kazi kwa sababu hiyo kitu inaitengeneza kila mali. Nyumba ya mtu ni ripe, chakula ni ni, ni kule. Hata ni, ni facilities ni nunu, ni nunue. Isegirinya Akiro is an example of the many budding athletes who began from humble beginnings to make in the competitive arena. Victor Ogale, KTN Sports. Well, in 2013, we got to learn that, um, first of all, the definition of the word selfie is taking a self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you hold the camera and then and you take a the picture of yourself. Off. We got to learn that um, um, it's, it's very much okay to take a selfie as um, demonstrated by one President Barack Obama. So Absolutely. do you want to try that now? Uh, yeah. You do you want to try that? Yes. Okay, I, 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 let's see how the selfie goes. Um... Well, there we go. That's the selfie. <laughs> Good. And that is the definition of a selfie. Post it on Twitter shortly after this. <laughs> well, um, we we are going to um, Eldoret. Um, I believe that um, uh, Deputy President William Ruto has uh, said he is going to be availing himself in uh, Eldoret for the peace concert. I'm not very sure whether we have um, confirmed his arrival, but we'll go to Eldoret now. We'll go to Eldoret now, where we'll find that out in a moment.
That looks like a fantastic concert. If you're in Eldoret and you're not at that Fist concert, mm -hmm. I don't understand. Why you should be? I mean, today there's all manner of uh, concerts uh, in Kasarani. We have yes. one everywhere in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everywhere. You should be somewhere. Uh, and being at home also is acceptable. Yes. Being in the studio of taking selfies is acceptable. <laughs> being everywhere is acceptable. Well, as we wind up 2013, I'm, I'm sure some of us would not like to repeat what has happened uh, in 2013. And well, um, what is your message for 2014 as we wind up? Lose some weight. <laughs> okay, that's for you. I, I should say add some weight. <laughs> but I, I would like to tell Kenyans to look at the money that we have in this country and just see some of the features that are on there. I think those are the best definition of unity in this country. And the fact that we all use the money is, the, is, is one message that we should all really internalize and see that unity is the only thing that brings us together. Right, my message, tenacity and gratitude will carry you through to 2014. Let's do this all over again the entire of next year. Absolutely. On a more serious note, um, believe in God. That's it for 2014. Have a good night. Um, enjoy the rest of the uh, Peace Concert in Eldoret. Have a great new year ahead and God bless.